Hey now, YouTube. A couple of weeks ago, I went ahead and I bought myself a pair of designer clownfish. I got a black ice and a snowflake. And I have to admit that I didn't think that the two would be able to pair up, but they paired up right away. And I'm super, super excited about it. As you can see by the title of my video, Mixing Clownfish with Damsels. Not often are you able to introduce clownfish into an environment where a damsel has been dominating. If you've been following my videos, you know that the damsel, the blue damsel, is the first fish that I introduced into my tank. Now, he's been in the tank for maybe about three, four months at this point, so he's obviously established dominance. As soon as I introduce the two clownfish into the system, immediately the damsel was hostile attacking them, biting them, and it wasn't a pretty sight. So, as you can see now, everyone is getting along. No fish are dead, no fish are missing fins. It's a good ecosystem that we have going on. So before I reveal the uh, my technique, or something that I tried for the very first time, and obviously it was successful, I wanna to talk to you about introducing clownfish or a damsel specifically into your system. So I'm not talking about tangs, I'm not talking about other species, just sticking to the clownfish and damsel conversation here. So the first question that you have to ask yourself, and these are three easy rules that I follow with any fish most of the time. Who was introduced first? That's number one. If the damsel was introduced first, there's a big chance that he's going to dominate the tank, okay? So if the clownfish was introduced first and then you bring in the damsel, there's a very big likelihood that there's not gonna be any sort of problems happening in your tank at this stage. Damsels are hostile by nature. And you're gonna find this crazy, but clownfish come from the damsel family. Now, as you can see, my clownfish are kind of swimming in their independent corners. Sometimes they're together, sometimes they're with the damsels, sometimes they're a little bit everywhere, but most of the time they kind of hide in their corner. And that's really due to the fact that they don't have something to host, so they need to feel safe. Uh, and that's why that they kind of corner themselves because it limits or eliminates uh, the different angles that they need to cover, if I can put it that way. So my next step will be to find something that they can host. I'm not a big fan of anemones for the simple fact that they move around, they sting other corals, and they tend to be a bit of a pain in the ass in that sense. So what I'm doing is I'm going to find a nice long tentacle toadstool for them to host. Anyway, let's continue. Number two, uh, size is in question here. If you introduce a small damsel the very first fish into your tank, and then you introduce two larger fish, two larger clownfish, chances are there's not gonna be any problems because the damsel will recognize that this is a fight that he can't win. If it's the opposite way around, like it is in my tank, my damsel is maybe about three inches long at this point, and my biggest clownfish is maybe two, two and a half inches. So because of that, the damsel automatically has dominance over the fish in terms of its capabilities of taking on another fish. Number three, is it worth it? This is something that you need to ask yourself right away, right? Is it worth introducing a new fish into the system and disrupting everything, right? Is my $20 damsel worth more to me than my $150 exotic clownfish? My answer to that was, I need to try to get both of these species or both of these fish to get along. So first of all, let's talk about the method that I ended up using. And I just kind of thought of, if only this fish, this blue damsel, could completely forget about this tank or about his dominance. And then I thought to myself, why don't I take the damsel and put it into my refugium and I left him there for about two weeks. Sure, he was miserable, he looked miserable. I kept feeding him for the first three days he wouldn't eat anything, but I moved him down to the refugium where it's probably really, really loud. And then when I reintroduced him two weeks after that into the system, there was absolute peace. Didn't even go after the clownfish once, completely forgot about them, uh, totally. And somehow that worked. 
So I definitely recommend that you try this technique if you're mixing clownfish with damsel and you introduce a damsel first or vice versa. An important fact to remember is that clownfish is actually from the damsel family. So it makes sense that clownfish being damsels will attack other damsels and vice versa. They're both of the same species, so they're both fighting for the same territory. Well, as usual, thanks again, guys. This was a really quick video. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you're trying this technique or if you've introduced it and you didn't have the same results. I'm interested to find out. And until next time, happy reefing. Right on.